it's mid-November. Winter's coming. It's been a little colder today. Weather station tells me it's about 37 degrees here. It's supposed to snow overnight. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to walk you through everything we do to transition this geothermal greenhouse from warm weather growing over to cold weather growing, since we'll continue to use it during the winter. First thing you'll notice, the shade cloth is still on. We've had some warm days in November, so I've elected to leave it on until I know we've got a decent sized snowstorm coming. And then I want it off because uh, that shade cloth, which is a 40% aluminate, it will hold the snow, but if we pull it off, the polycarbonate window, it will just uh, slide right off of that window. So we've got it on. We'll pull, probably pull it off fairly soon. But for now, shade cloth is still on. Uh, but let me show you what we do on the inside to prepare for winter. Okay, this is the suction room. And the first thing we're looking at are these fans. These two outer fans are 24 inch fans and we turn those off. I switch a breaker off and put a piece of duct tape on it to remind me not to turn it on. But the outer fans are used for summer. That middle fan is a 20 inch fan and we plug that in. It's hooked to a thermostat, which is on the other side of this wall. That will come on when it warms to mid 80s and above in this greenhouse in the winter. And believe it or not, if it's 30 degrees outside and the sun is out, it's going to warm up into the 80s in here. So we're still doing some cooling in the winter as well as warming. And that fan is the one fan we use. The other change we make here in the suction room is right here. I put the solar stick onto this vent so that this vent remains closed when it's cold but when it warms to mid 60s and above this vent will slowly open up and the reason i put that cardboard cut out there is because when it's really cold outside and that vent opens up it'll cool down that solar stick too much so just by using that little cardboard cutout it allows that solar stick to operate properly and open and close where I want it. So that's the vent and the fans. Let me walk into the main portion of the greenhouse and show you what we do in here. Sensors are telling me that it's about 58, 59 degrees in here right now, depending on where. So we have no heating and no cooling going on in here. Only heating is uh, where we get a little bit of sunlight it does warm this greenhouse up so on the far end here we have insulated the vents if you can see that we've got insulation on the big vents we've left the top one open um, but we've insulated the big three vents and i put some i've taped some plastic on the outside to help get any cracks so that there's no cold air coming through those vents the upper vent is used for cooling when that fan comes on when it gets into the mid 80s it uh, it'll of course pressurize this main grow growing area here and air will go through the vent pipes there in that corner and it'll also push open that vent when the fan goes off the vent closes and it works really well so the other thing i'll probably show you in this corner is this fan or this blower here in the corner that operates the geothermal pipes here in the greenhouse those pipes drop eight feet into the ground they run 230 feet through the yard and they come out on the far end that far corner over there but one thing we have to do when it gets cold is we have to open up this thermostat and switch the white wire from a yellow to a blue dot and that allows this blower to turn on when it gets, we've got it set to turn on below 57 degrees. In the summer, of course, we've got it set to turn on when it goes above about 86, 87 degrees. So why do we have it set for about 57, 58 degrees? 
because we have uh, measured the temperature of the air coming out. I won't show you how we do it since the uh, blower is not running right now. Here's where those vent pipes come back into the greenhouse. And we've measured the temperature and it's coming in at about 57, 58 degrees. Uh, so there's no reason to run the geothermal when it is uh, warmer than that temperature. So they come on 57, 58 degrees. And this is a backup heater. It's an electric heater. It's only rated for about 750 square feet, but it does a great job. If we get down into the low 50s, this will start coming on sporadically. And usually the greenhouse will warm into the 70s or 80s during the day, and then overnight it'll slowly lose temperature. And I've noticed in the early morning hours, this will kind of run sporadically going off and on. And it helps us to uh, keep this greenhouse a little warmer. If we had just the geothermal air, we could main temperatures probably in the mid 40s and higher, but we would really like to be above 50 degrees during the winter in this greenhouse. So we've elected to use that uh, electric heater as a backup. One other thing I'll show you here while we're by the bananas. I've got a couple of things going on here. The bananas will survive during the winter, but they will not grow if it gets below, let's say the mid 60s and below. So they didn't grow at all last winter. So we're trying a couple of things here. You can see these black barrels. We've actually got them throughout the greenhouse. They're filled with water and um, they warm up when it is hot in here, when the sun is out, you'll, you can touch the barrel and feel that they're warm. And basically what we're doing is just thermal banking, a little bit of extra uh, heat mass into the barrels, kind of like we do in the walls here since we're underground in this greenhouse. But the idea is that it slowly re releases heat during the night when it gets cold in here. They help a little bit, not a lot, but it's kind of a fun little experiment to try. We've got them right around the bananas the other thing we've got, we had one of our viewers recommend that we put a, a heat mat underneath one of the vases here. So what we thought we'd do is we wrapped the vase with a heat mat. We've got it plugged in. I don't know if you can hear that noise. It's a uh, train going by about 100 feet from the greenhouse. So uh, anyway, so we've got a heat mat wrapped around that vase, plugged in. Well, let's see what happens. I have no idea if it'll help, but, uh, and then the third thing I'll mention is I love to put mulch and compost on the ground. I do it in the garden. I like to do it in here. It does help insulate the ground in the winter. It also helps in the summer when we get really hot. Uh, there's at least a few inches of mulch around here. My goal is to have about a six inch layer of mulch and compost in this greenhouse in the next few years as we just mulch leaves and branches. So I'm gonna show you one more thing uh, that we do when we transition this greenhouse over to winter and that's over in the shop. And basically what I'm gonna start with here is in that four, far corner, I've got vent pipes. And when we cool this greenhouse in the winter, the air gets pushed out of those vent pipes and we have run those vent pipes over into the shop. So I'm gonna show you that real quick. Okay, I'm in the shop now. And uh, what we elected to do was run the vent pipes from the, sh rather than just have them come out in the yard next to the greenhouse, we ran them over into the shop building, which is about 80 feet away from the greenhouse. And um, so when the greenhouse is cooling, gets up into the 80s, it pushes the air out through these vent pipes and uh, comes out obviously here in the shop building. And the reason we did that was twofold. In the winter, we, we love that warm air, it's free. We don't heat the shop, It'll it's really well insulated. It'll stay around 38, 39 degrees or higher without any heating. But uh, we're gonna test it and see how it does this winter now that we have these vent pipes coming into the shop. Uh, I have measured the air when it's running and it's coming in here about 60, 61 degrees. So it's cooling as it goes through the, uh, those uh, pipes through the ground. Um, it's probably entering the pipes at about 80 degrees and, um, 
And so it is cooling, but we're, we're happy with 60 degrees coming out of here. Uh, we'll keep you posted on how it works throughout the winter. I think it'll help a little bit at the very least. But one of the changes is we, we put this blower on so that during the summer when we're trying to cool the greenhouse, we've got this set on a timer. So during the day, it'll run from about one till six at night, pushing the cool air that's in the shop back into the greenhouse during the summer. And then of course, we've now switched it so that we are using the warm air from the greenhouse to help warm the shop during the winter. So again, that's just one other minor uh, switch over we do for winter. Okay, I'm back in the greenhouse. I, I thought I'd just mention, because I think it's worth mentioning, this greenhouse, it's a geothermal greenhouse. It's built below ground. So the insulation from being below grade obviously really helps us retain heat. We've got spray on foam insulation, about two and a half inches thick or greater on anything that's not a window or a vent or a door. So it really holds up overnight on its own pretty well. Geothermal kicks on at about 57 degrees. That backup heater will come on, oh, maybe low 50s. But it does really well. We've gotten down to 15 degrees overnight. We'll get down around zero on a couple days throughout this winter. And I do expect it to do about, oh, 50, low 50s and above. The ground sensor seems to be the one doing the best. That's been around 56, 57. Um, the other sensors have been in the mid 50s, you know, 53, 54, 55. So that's just a quick tour. That's what we do to prepare for winter. We are gonna keep growing throughout the winter. Let me know if you have any comments or suggestions. We love your feedback. It's been really helpful. That's why we do these videos. So uh, keep the helpful suggestions and comments coming. And we'll see you next time.